everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This video is about the Tucson Knives TS-105 Mini Folding Pocket Knife. And the segment you saw right at the start of the video was me reassembling this knife. And before we go any further with this video, I want to let you guys know that this, in my opinion, is not going to be a review video. I mean, if you want to call it a review, then well, by all means. But I just decided to record this video because one, this is my first Tucson Knives knife. Tucson Knives knife, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, Tucson Knives knife. And two, this is actually a pretty well-made knife. All right, let me just show you guys the box that it came in. It's a very simple, basic Tucson knives box. It's like made in Yangjiang, China. And it's like a sleeve with a cardboard box. And yep, that's it. The knife came in a little Ziploc bag that was sitting inside there. And this thing was like completely lubricated out. Like there was just this lubrication all over it. And it was kind of difficult to handle. So I got a kitchen towel, I dried it off. And I realized that this thing was soaked through and through because even even after I clean off all the lubrication, whenever I open up the knife, the lube or the grease or whatever that was continued to leak out from every single nook and cranny. So I decided to disassemble the whole thing, clean it up, and then, well, I recorded the reassembly. And I'm glad that I did all of that because I learned quite a bit about the knife and I'm actually quite impressed after doing that. But first, let me give you guys a quick size comparison. So we got the knife here compared to a Spyderco Delica 4 and you can see that it's literally the size of the Delica scales. Then we have a CRKT Pilar and this should give you a better indication of just how small the TS-105 is. Next is a size comparison to a mini knife because it's in the same realm I guess but that is the Braza Bro and a size comparison to a Surge Bean. So far out of the four knives that are compared to, the TS-105 is still the smallest knife. Now a quick measurement shows that the blade length is about 1.6 inches and the handle length including the lanyard slot is about 2.5 inches long. It's about 3 quarter inches tall and just about a half an inch wide. That's not including the pocket clip, by the way. As for the blade stock, I'm going to go by centimeters here. The blade stock is about three and a half millimeters. Yeah, just about. And honestly, though, I don't really care so much about exact measurements. I just generally put it against another knife to compare. So once again, I'll bring in the Delica and we will have a look at this against the Delica once again. So that is how much smaller it is compared to the Delica. It looks like... Yeah, it's, it's really, really small. I mean, on its own, it looks like a pretty well fleshed out knife. But when you compare it to <laughs> a standard size pocket knife, I suppose, you'll see just how small this is. And just for fun, here it is compared to a stubby. Yep, it is really that small. I'll just close it up so that you can just compare it this way as well. So it is of a very, very pocketable size. This knife is designed by Sebastian Irawan. I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly and made by Tucson Knives. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that Sebastian Irawan is an Indonesian. And the reason why I believe so is because one of his surname, Irawan, two is because he actually designed another knife in conjunction with Tucson Knives and he called that the Garuda. So that just leads me to think or basically assume that he is an Indonesian. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But anyway, focusing back on the knife, this features titanium scales as well as a titanium backspacer and a titanium clip. I don't know what material the hardware is made of and there's a pin that holds a backspacer in place there. I don't know what material that is made of as well. But the blade is made of M390 steel. You guys can see that as well as his name, Sebastian Iraman Design. And the locking mechanism has a steel lock bar insert, which is really, really cool. And now that you can see this, basically it is a, I guess you would consider this a frame lock. Uh, well, you could say it's a liner lock because well, after disassembling it and then reassembling it, I believe that you could technically have the knife completely assembled without these two outer, I guess, scales of the knife itself. And the reason why I'm saying that is because these scales are completely removable. And I believe that with slightly shorter hardware, you'd be able to have the knife, I guess, bare bones without the need of these two outer scales. So right now, I guess in this configuration, this would be considered a liner lock. And if you remove the scales, then it'd be considered a frame lock because it works totally fine even without these scales out here. But I think that the knife in totality like that is actually pretty cool looking. I like the way it looks. I mean, I'm not a fan of the blade shape. It's like a tanto with some belly. I mean, I get it. It is good in terms of a practical usage, but in terms of, I guess, aesthetics, then some reason it just doesn't suit the knife, you know? It just doesn't go well. Like this, this belly here doesn't go well with the rest of the knife. But 
all in all, I think that with the scales on, it looks really cool. It's got all these cutouts here that are really interesting and it's got a very, very nice looking lanyard slot. Now, I know I'm jumping around, but I'm just talking about the cosmetics of it and I'm just mentioning to you guys whatever comes to mind on the spot. So yeah, the lanyard slot is something that I really, really like. It looks really cool. And when you put this in your pocket and you see the lanyard slot out there, it really does not look like a pocket knife of any sort at all. Like, I mean, yes, of course, this is such a small frame. You know, it doesn't stick out far. It doesn't even resemble a knife handle or knife scale, but this lanyard slot really looks looks like, like a keychain accessory or key fob in your pocket. So it's just really, really cool the way it sits out of the pocket. I like this. I like this a lot. Now this clip, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with this clip. And the reason why is because, well, it's got very, very nice cutouts. You can see that all these slots here are cut out to fit the circular cutout of the scale itself. So it goes very, very well, matches really well with the scale. But this is in a right side tip up only configuration. But the main thing that I don't like about it is that it actually comes loose pretty easily unless you lock tight this torx screw down here and this is a t8 sized torx screw so now since i'm talking about the hardware these two torx screws here the pivot screw as well as the torx screw that holds the clip in they are sized t8 torx screws and then this one over here that holds the scales in is a t6 torx screw now this one here holds a lock bar insert in place and that is a t6 torx screw so uh it's strange because it's such a small knife and i'm actually surprised that they actually went for t8 and t6 i was expecting like a standard Talk screw size. And next in the same area basically is the backspace and I think that the backspace is really nicely done. I like this milled out slot design. It's actually pretty cool. And if you guys take a closer look at the scales, yeah it is I guess a sort of like a stone wash kind of finish but it's pretty scratched up now because I've been using it. Yeah I've been putting it on my EDC just for fun. You know I just left it in my pocket just to see what kind of usage I got out of it. And honestly speaking this is actually a pretty nifty knife. It's quite a fun knife to fidget with and that sentence leads me into the next point that I'm going to talk about which is the flipping mechanism. So so this is a front flipper kind of knife and it is actually easy to use. Now this is not my first time handling a front flipper but it's really small so it's easy to slip out of your hand if you're not holding it correctly or if you're not getting a good grip on it but all these cut out circular slots I guess they do kind of add spots where you could put some grip on it. So it's really, really cool. I like the way that this is done, actually. I think it was more of a design nuance rather than something that was more of an ergonomic purpose. But you could have your fourth finger here and your third finger here. You could just pinch it like that. You could have your, I guess, your third finger here and your index finger here. Just pinch it like that. It's actually quite quite cool to hold in hand you know but deploying is really easy just make sure that you have the correct grip so when i'm deploying it with my index finger like that basically i have my fourth finger here my middle finger here and then my index finger on top and i'll just pull backwards on it and for this thumb flipper i think that it's quite well executed and i'm not so sure if it's because of the size of the knife and the blade proportions and stuff like that but this is actually quite easy to use like what i'm trying to say is it's not too tough to use like some other front flippers are actually quite difficult to get used to but this one's actually quite okay even though the detent is pretty strong on this knife so let me just show you guys as long as you get a good grip almost from the front side here or the start of the jimping of the flipper tab you just got to pull it backwards and aim for this nub to go in here in a straight line is going to deploy quite easily just just like that see so to me that is there was a uh, it's quite quite simple quite quite straightforward in fact i find this a lot easier to open up than say for example the first time that i opened the surge bean now the surge bean required me to have a little bit of i guess some kind of a leverage point on the meat of my thumb here and then just pull back so the surge requires me to do that but for this 105 all I got to do is just make sure that I hold the scales correctly and then just give it that action and it'll just deploy. Now, next is of course, deploying it with my thumb, using the thumb flipper. And that to me was really, really easy once I got the technique. Well, it isn't really a technique. It's more of the way I found it comfortable to hold. I just got to get my middle finger in this slot here and I could basically grip it like that with just the force of my middle finger against my middle finger itself or this part of my palm. Just got to do this like that, right? And then use my thumb and do the same thing just make sure i get enough grip from the start of the jimping here and then i could just flick it open and it's really 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 simple um it was quite a no-brainer when i first did it i was like okay that's really really easy i just gotta make sure that i keep the rest of my fingers and the meat of my middle finger away from the blade itself but once you get that it's always gonna deploy and it deploys with such authority you hear that snap now here's the cool part and the main reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place and that's because I'm able to not only deploy it this way with my index finger or this way with my thumb and you guys are seeing how well and how easy I am just deploying this thing but I could also deploy it this way. Yeah, just pinch it here and 
almost with like a snapping kind of motion, I'm able to deploy it with my middle finger, just like that. And it's so fun. This is super, super fun. Now, I wish I could do this with my CKF Terra, but uh, I guess <laughs> it's a totally different beast, you know? I don't know if any of you out there who own, say, for example, Olamic Buskers or like, for example, the Kaiser Feist. I don't know if you guys could do that with your front flipper knives, but I gotta say that this is really, really fun. Just, just like that. It's... It's really, really cool. Just pinch it. I'm like literally pinching the pivot pin with my index finger and my thumb and then having it up like that in this orientation, then just grab my middle finger and just snap it open. And you know what's even cooler? You could do the same thing with your fourth finger, with your ring finger. All you gotta do is grip it the same way but with your middle finger instead. So just middle finger and thumb on the pivot pin. Then just make sure you get some leverage up here with your index finger. And then with your fourth finger, make sure you start from as far in as you can on the jimping area, just like that. And then you gotta pull it downwards and it will just deploy with a snap, kind of like that. So that's... <laughs> That's really, really fun. Like when I found out I could do this, I just had quite a lot of fun. Just, it's, it's, it's really quite cool. For such a small knife and that action there, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's not the best action ever. You could actually feel that it's not as smooth as other knives. But yes, this is a ball bearing system. But I guess the variety of ways of deploying this knife is just what makes it really, really fun. Now, of course, I got to show you guys the lockup. The lockup is not the best. It's 50%. It's quite far in, I got to say. But maybe, maybe in the future, Tucson knives might consider selling some replacement lock bar inserts. I'm not so sure. But, you know, right now, this is it. And the blade centering is actually easy to get into the middle. It's just that you got to make sure that you get the pivot pins at the right amount of tension. Um, they do come loose over time. I start to see my knife actually leaning towards the side every once in a while. And uh, well, it looks okay like that. But once I do this, it kind of looks like it's leaning to the side. I don't know. It's just, yeah, just just the thing. It's not the best in terms of fit and finish. It looks really, really good. And it's small, it's light, it's really comfortable, and it's really fun to fidget with. But... In terms of the fit and finish, it's not the best. The biggest gripe I have is that the lock bar insert there has some flash sticking out. You guys can see that? Well, unfortunately, it snags onto your pocket, you know? So what I'm gonna have to do is just remove that and then I'm gonna have to sand that part down and then install it back again. So I'm talking about the lock bar insert. So I gotta do that if I really want to have, I guess, a less flawed experience with this knife. Now, don't get me wrong. It cuts fine. It cuts completely fine. In fact, it's so sharp that I accidentally grazed my fourth finger on the blade and uh, well, you could see this part over here. Can you guys see that? I'm trying to get it on camera. So there's one cut here and another one out. Yep, another one there. Wow, why is my finger red? Well, I think it's because of this, this action. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is not sharp. It's just that I think it's the way I handled it. But anyway, these cuts were from just accidentally grazing the blade. So it's actually pretty sharp out of box. I haven't sharpened this at all and it cuts paper fine. It just does all its cutting tasks pretty well. I mean, it is a really, really small pocket knife after all. So in the mini size knife category, I think this is actually pretty cool. It's more comfortable than other mini sized knives that I have because of the sheer width of it. Like, I think this is actually quite a comfortable size. It feels nice. It doesn't look menacing. It looks cool. In fact, it looks like a piece of pocket art. And I could totally see this as a pendant, like a necklace pendant. Just string your necklace through here or something like that. And then that will be good to go. You know, the next thing about it is that I don't understand why there was this nail nick or this thumb slot because it is almost impossible to use like there's no way there's no way that i could i mean yeah i could but then you heard the blade getting scratched by the liners itself i mean yeah in order to do that you really have to force your thumb in there and get as much meat of your thumb into the slot and just kind of pry it out like that and then that would work but yeah i mean at the risk of scratching this finish off, you know? Uh, even with your middle finger, you're not able to get much in there, partly because of the pocket clip, as well as how deep this and this part are of the knife itself. It's a really, really small slot and... Yeah, see? And because I kept doing that, I actually scratched some of the finishing on the blade. You could see the discoloration there. So that's one, uh, I guess, one other gripe that I don't like. But you are definitely able to deploy the knife with one hand. Just push this up a little bit. If you're not looking for a flick, just roll it outwards like that and then finish up the deploying action with that thumb slot. I guess you could do that. Uh, you know, if you're going for something slower, a little bit more control, just do this and that would work completely fine. Let me show that to you guys again, just like that. And that's actually easy. And you could simply close it with one hand. It's really quite simple. Now I could do that easily with my left hand too. Just push this part up like that and then finish up the opening action with the thumb slot, even though the clip is there. It's really that simple. 
Not a bad knife, honestly speaking, not a bad knife. And now the third gripe I have about it is that this part here is a hot spot. This part is really sharp. Like sharp, meaning that it doesn't actually cut my skin, but it is sharp, like a hot spot. So it sits in your pocket this way down. So this part would normally hit the side of your finger if you're reaching in because it's such a small knife, you see? So if you have your hand in your pocket just to look cool or something, I don't know if you're fishing out for some coins or something, you might scratch yourself here just like that. And while it does not cut me this way, I'm sure that a fast action definitely would get yourself some blood on there. You know, I'm just being honest here, just being as realistic as possible. Next, and the last thing that I want to mention is the price point on this. Now, I think I got lucky. And I'm saying that because generally you could only get two sun knives on either DH gate, which is going to be pretty expensive, or as an auction piece on eBay. So I got this on eBay and I managed to snipe it, I guess snipe it for 54 USD. Of course, that doesn't include shipping, but for $54, I think this is pretty okay. I mean, we're talking about M390 steel as well as titanium handles, the way it's constructed, the way it's built and everything, all the material costs, all the design and all that, it's actually pretty all right. I guess 54 is an acceptable price. My maximum bid was actually $60. Now, if it was anything more than 60 bucks, I would really consider not buying this knife, but I managed to get it for 54. So that's why I think it's, Actually quite quite reasonable there oh I forgot to mention something I really really hate Tucson knives logo I really hate it I really really do it looks super super old it looks super dated and I wish that it was just a little bit more streamlined like if it was just a small font Tucson and it was at a different location like maybe up here or something it'd be a lot more classy I guess but this actually I'll be honest with you guys the main reason why I've never gotten any Tucson knife before this is because I really really hate the design of the logo and I hate the logo placement. I think you guys heard me mention it when I was talking about it in the video where I visited Adrian's house because Adrian showed me his Tucson knife and that was the first time I handled a Tucson knives knife and I thought that well Tucson knives actually make some pretty good knives just that I really hate this design thing. And look at the back guys isn't there a classier way to put Sebastian's name there? Like it's not even curved like the grind of the blade it's it's like it's just straight it's just I don't know I mean we could have the M390 up here which would look pretty classy and maybe Sebastian maybe you could just have like your initials or a little logo and just have it up here or something or maybe even on the blade stock itself you know and then just two sun knives could be just up here I mean I mean yeah just me nitpicking at the design choices you know I mean I'm no designer but you know from a I guess an aesthetic point of view I suppose I really don't like the way it's done like in my opinion this knife would look so much better if there was no logo on here and here. I mean, M390 could be there, but just no logos. It'll look a lot, a lot sleeker in my opinion. Oh yes, I completely missed out on this, but there is a sharpening choil there. And ergonomics are actually pretty, pretty good for a small size knife. Like you could have your index finger here, just so you could have some grip. And then your thumb up here with a little bit, just that little bit of the jimping up here. So you get your cutting tasks done. You could hold it this way as well, like that. You could pinch it like that. You could have your thumb up here i don't know if you want to do this i don't know it's just actually this cut out here is actually pretty comfortable and i like the fact that the lock bar is actually cut higher than this cut out here on the show side of the scale because that allows you to disengage the lock bar a lot easier you don't have to dig your entire thumb in just so you can disengage it it's out here and it's got the chamfer there so that's pretty comfortable so interesting because they've got very good chamfering all around and the whole thing feels just really, really good, except for this part over here. So this is not the perfect mini-sized pocket knife, but it is a very interesting mini-sized pocket knife. I like the way it looks. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I like it because of the design here in its closed form. But when it's open up, I don't like it as much because of the blade shape. I wish that it had less of a belly. It was a little bit more straight, more angular, so it could match the rest of the blade handle itself. Like, you know, that whole design, like here's a nice curve, but this belly here just looks a little bit strange. But I think that in terms of practical usage, this is going to be really, really good because you could have a nice leverage point there like that. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about clearly because I'm no knife expert, but you guys get what I mean. <laughs> And that's about it, everyone. I just wanted to share this with you guys and uh, just let you guys know that this is my first Two Sun Knives knife. It's not bad, not the best. I'm gonna have to file this down. I'm gonna have to lock tight the pivot screw down. I'm gonna have to lock tight this clip screw down as well and throw on a lanyard. And if this thing ever gets dirty, well, I'll just stonewash the outer scales, you know? 
Uh, oh yeah, and talking about that, I mean, you could easily just customize this in terms of the color. Like you could anodize the liners, one color, and then have the backspacer, another color, and then you could have the scales, the outer scales itself, another color, and the clip itself, yet another color. So you could technically have four different colors on the same knife. I don't know, just it's just your choice, I suppose. But right now, I like the way it looks raw and quite happy with this purchase because I managed to get it for 54 USD on eBay. And that's about it everyone. I've come to the end of this video. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. But once again, like I said, this is not a review. This is just me talking about this knife. Whatever comes to mind, I just wanna blab it out because I thought it was interesting to share with you guys that you could actually do this with a knife like that. I think that's just super cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, I won't be able to put sales links to this because well one is on dhgate number two is because ebay links are always updating but i will however put the socials of sebastian era one as well as two time knives i mean the instagram account basically in the description box down below so go check it out if you're interested and thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative i'm not telling you guys to buy this knife because it really is i guess very subjective it's a very subjective kind of knife like mini size knife so yeah thank you for sharing in this size of my life everyone and I'll catch all of you in the next video. And until then, gaga, boo. Good morning. Pardon my gruff looking, beautiful morning sunshine face. I'm on my way to get my morning coffee. So I'm adding on this part of the video because just a couple of days ago, I started following Sebastian Irawan on Instagram. And for one of his latest posts, I realized that he actually calls this a unprofiled opener. And to me, it's just a thumb flipper. It's just another style of a thumb flipper. But he did show like his own unique way of deploying the knife. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna cross the road. Yeah, so I was saying that he did show his own very unique way of deploying the knife. And what he did was he used his fingernail and uh, he latched onto the part of the blade that interfaces with the lock bar. You know what I mean? Like this part over here. And then he just grabs onto it and flicks it down and I decided that I wanted to try it out just to see if it works and yeah I do have a little bit of fingernail so I think this is going to be pretty easy but let's just see how this goes oh wow okay so that works uh that's interesting uh, I've not seen any knife being uh designed in this way so once again just it's Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. The next thing I want to mention though, is that he called this the ladybug. I mean, okay, well, in my opinion, that's a really, really bad name. First of all, this is a Tucson Knives knife. Now, Tucson Knives already are confusing enough because they're all just numbers in the name TS something. Now, this one is the TS 105. Okay, it's easy to get confused already, but now the fact that you're actually naming it the Ladybug, which is already a name for a very iconic knife by Spyderco, like it's confusing enough already when you're talking about just numbers, but now you're gonna name it something that already exists. Like, come on, dude. And you can do better, you know? Like the other knife that you designed was called the Garuda and that is really unique. But to call it the Ladybug, I mean... Uh, I think that's a really bad move on your part. Not very smart, not the best name. I'm pretty sure you could do better, you know? But that's my opinion. I guess I just wanted to try that out to deploy the knife that way. And I found it quite interesting. And uh, I just wanted to add that part to the video. And that's about it. I'm gonna go get my coffee now. And uh, yeah, for real this time, everyone, gaga. Boost.